Kendrick was always like just a lovable kid. He was always concerned about other people. I remember once when he started pre-K, a kid was dropped off and wasn't used to that and was clinging on to his mom and crying and Kendrick got up from his mat and went over and hugged him and said, it's gonna be okay. You know, he was my best friend and uh, he was the love of his mother's life. He was the 18 year old kid that before he would go to bed would go into our room and reach down and give his mom a kiss on the forehead. Wow, welcome back to TBL. That was John Castillo talking with Jeff about his son Kendrick Castillo who lost his life when he tackled a school shooter here in Colorado back in 2019. That school shooter was found guilty yesterday on 46 counts, including the first degree murder of Kendrick Castillo. He faces a mandatory sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Joining us now is Kendrick's father, John Castillo. John, thank you so much for being here again. I, I Listen, your son is, a, is an American hero, but at the same time, he shouldn't have had to have been an American hero. Clearly, he saved many people's lives that day, but he should still be here today. Now, you were in court yesterday when the verdict was read. What went through your mind when you heard them say guilty? Oh, you know, I, I wanted to shout. I had so much joy. You know, it's a... Uh, we waited for over two years. We have been impacted by COVID and so many other things that have uh, pushed this justice off. I mean, um, hearing that was amazing, but sitting there and hearing count after count that, uh, you know, he's guilty on all charges was just uh, enormous and uh, like a breath of fresh air, like weights taken off of us really. John, it's good to talk to you again, my friend. And the word justice in this case, you're never going to get Kendrick back. And, and I know, you know, when we talked last, it was on a sad occasion. It's always going to be sad. But I hope you smile today. I hope your wife smiles today. I hope your family and your community smiles today because that was a good thing that happened. Justice was served, even though you're not going to get Kendrick back. So you have to take this as a victory. Am I right? No, absolutely. It was a huge victory. I mean waiting and anticipating and coming up to this moment. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you what it means for justice for Kendrick. Um, it, it's another hurdle in steps moving forward that uh, we are glad uh, took place and we were able to have jurors who listened to testimony evidence and felt, uh, you know, the same way that we did. and. and uh, it's just an amazing day. And you're right. I mean, we'll never get Kendrick back. I mean, that's at the end of the day, even with, um, you know, all of the convictions that were read out and, and the other families and all that that are involved. I mean, we're never going to get Kendrick back. You know, we drove from the courthouse right to where he's buried last night and uh, talked to his headstone. And that that's the reality of this you know it's a in in some ways it seems so surreal or almost like you should be watching a movie or something like that but this is real life this is this is our lives now and never getting our son back but knowing that he's an american hero absolutely absolutely he is john Absolutely. A absolutely. And this is going to be a little touchy, and I appreciate you going there with me on this question. You and your wife were there the whole trial, and some of the defense's arguments are hard to talk about. They said that Kendrick was the aggressor. I want to know how you felt about that and how you dealt with sitting there hearing that. Oh, you know, I felt angry. As any parent would when you're sitting there and you know the heroic actions of your son that day and, and others in that classroom that saved lives. And you have a defense that is uh, painting a very different picture of what they perceive and listening to them say that Kendrick charged with aggression towards the murderer or the killer. Um, trying to really spin it as if he was the criminal in this instead right. of the hero. You know, it, it just makes you want to jump out of your seat. You know, sure. I, I see when I watch court television how families can get so involved in that. 
But you know, we're a civil society, we're loving people, and that's not how we handle things. We, we restrain that anger, that emotion, and we pray, we hope for justice, and that's what we got. And the outcome was amazing, but, but yeah, it's very, very difficult. And you know, it's even harder for me to imagine that um, there are people in the world who, um, for either fame or money, um, enter into a realm to defend such demonic and evil killers. I hear that. No, that you know, I, I don't want to spend one more second talking about the defense for that animal. I'd like to talk about the important person here, and that's Kendrick. What do you think my man would feel about this verdict? Hmm. You know, I think he would be overjoyed. I mean, I, I think that he would be proud of his mom and dad to, yesterday for never giving up, you know, being the first ones through the door and the last ones to leave in, in many instances, driving, you know, doing whatever we have to do to make sure that justice was met for Kendrick. I think that he was with us. I think he was with the jurors. I think, you know, the uh, prosecution team was amazing. I cannot say enough about them, the sheriff's department. There are so many heroes and so many good people that embodied Kendrick's life and spirit that helped us get to the, to the point that we were at yesterday. And, you know, I just believe that Kendrick was with every one of them. And when I, I give the statement and I say, live, be like Kendrick, that's what I exactly what I mean. It's do your job well. If you're uh, like Detective Pereira, who didn't skip a beat when he was interviewing the murderers to make sure that things were followed up correctly, I mean, that's a man that you would hope under normal circumstances would just be doing their job. But I think it was exceptional, as we saw in video um, of the interviews shortly after the shooting. And then the DA's office, I mean, just every one of the attorneys that spoke and, uh, you know, delivered uh, after a testimony and, and cross-examined. I mean, they did it flawlessly. They held up against the defense. Everything could not have been more perfect. Thank you, John. Uh, and again, I think that attributes. Amen. Uh, live like Kendrick. That's the, uh, the takeaway here. Your son is a hero, and it may us all be inspired to live like Kendrick. Thank you so much, John, for being with us um, and sharing Kendrick's story. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with Dr. Coley. Thank you, John. Thanks, Thanks John. John.